everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Kareen Rayson from the Crew Coach on the Wellbeing Project. Today, we're going to be focusing on leadership and a specific element of leadership that I think you would all be able to relate to. My guest is one of our students from the Advanced Accelerator Leadership course, Tash Downings. Hi, Tash. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kareen. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm really excited to get stuck in. But before we do, can you just give us a bit of a background on who you are, how long you've been working in the industry and your position? Yeah, sure. Um, So I've been in the industry um, nine years now. Um, And yeah, I had a a background in um, massage and um, I studied, yes, I studied massage. I was doing a bit of waitressing. I was doing some nannying and I just kind of felt like I wanted to get some travel in as well. And I, I stumbled across yachting as we all do and never really left. The plan wasn't to be here for nine years, but, um, yeah, I've, I've just loved my journey and, and where I'm at now. So I'm currently employed as a chief stewardess in quite a unique diverse program, which is keeping me on my toes. (laughs) Um, And yeah, with this diverse program, um, it's quite, I've been looking to kind of attain some more skills to be able to um, better equip myself um, because I haven't really dealt with this situation before. So um, yeah, that's, that's a bit about my background. I love I love being on the water. I'm, I'm definitely hard to keep me off a, off a board, but um, I recently actually sustained quite a big injury. Um, so that put me in put me in a position where um, I wanted to further develop some skills. So that's where I stumbled across this course. Fantastic. Very interesting background. I must say, I I was working with special needs children before I went into yachting as well. So yeah, yeah, I I think we all come with diverse backgrounds. So it's really good that we can impart our various skill set in a different context. So Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing from you is that you have increased responsibilities and you are managing a lot of people. You have a fleet that you take care of. So it is a very dynamic role and I'm sure it comes with its unique stresses. What would be some of those stresses or what would be the reasons why specifically you thought, "Mm, maybe I need to do a leadership course? Um, well, some some of the the differences that I've been working with is is the fleet actually isn't in one location. It's it's dotted around the globe. So working remotely and and trying to do my best by managing a team um, and supporting them as best I can. Um, I've always worked obviously closely with your crew on one boat, but. Um, with this global program, it it's adds an extra layer of, of difficulty or diversity, should I say. Um, so yeah, I wanted to try, try see if I could increase or add some skills to my belt to help support my team better. Fantastic. And did you do much research when it comes to a leadership course? Like were you after something specific as how do I manage conflict or how do I manage stress on board or burnout? Was there anything that you had a key area of interest in? Um, I think the biggest thing I wanted to figure out was how to deal with um, or work well with different personalities. Um, We have a lot of senior crew in this program and um, they're there's a lot of you know a lot of strengths that everyone brings, um, but it can also having having a lot of senior crew can add a layer of complexity. Um, so just wanting to work with the different leaderships, um, different people that within the program um, has been something that I've been working on. So this course really did with all the modules just resonated with me really well. Um, conflict management was probably one of my biggest ones and collaboration. 
Um, so the two modules and also the mental health aspect as well. Um, I know that we're, I'm, I'm seeing burnout a lot more often. Um, so that that's really important to me. I'm really excited to, to hit the mental health module. We've yeah. touched base on the collaboration, obviously, and um, the conflict management. So really yeah. looking forward to mental health. So I know that you haven't finished the course as yet, but with regards to your desire to learn how to deal with different personalities, what part of the course has helped you navigate around that? So far, all of them, to be honest. Um, I know that's a bit cliche, but (laughs) um, the first module, Finding My Own Leadership style was really beneficial. I haven't really sat down and assessed my own, I know it sounds strange, but assessed my own values and and who I want to be as a leader and who I, who inspires me um, and how I want to be as a leader. So that that was kind of the perfect groundwork um, to start the course off and and really, it was pretty eye-opening and not overwhelming, but very, I knew I was in for a lot of growth with that first module. Um, And I would say motivating your crew has definitely been really helpful. But yeah, the collaboration and the conflict management uh, modules have both been Mm. very beneficial. Mm. I know you shared that you watched one of the TED videos, TED Talks. I integrated Mm. one of the TED Talks within the modules. You watched it twice. Is there a reason why you watched it twice? (laughs) It was just so interesting. I just, um, it was about conflict management. And, you know, when you hear the word conflict, you instantly feel like it's quite negative. Well, I do anyway. I'm not sure if that's um, normal for most people. But yeah, conflict tends to have a negative or, you know, you feel a little bit like tense when you hear it or, you know, you, you tend to think it's, um, not a pleasant situation, um, and I and I've I've resonated with that. Um, but learning in, in the TED talk, he discusses that you know conflict is actually an area of growth, and and looking behind the actual situation and looking underneath at the values and beliefs that are associated with that conflict. Um, that just yeah, it's made me look at it in such a different light. Um, so it's been, yeah, really, really good. So I've watched it twice and I've, sh- I've definitely sent it the link to a few people. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any yeah. responses, any feedback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a girlfriend that's really invested in um, personal development and she's just loving it. And um, my partner as well, who, who I work with, he, he's he been finding it really interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. I love that yeah. you're sharing your learnings with others. And it's always interesting yeah. to hear how other people perceive things and to be able to have a discussion around it as well makes it very interesting and just with your years of experience in the industry how do you interpret the most common forms of conflict that you see within teams what would you say yeah I'm thinking like how do people end up in conflict and what are they mostly in conflict about? Um, yeah, I guess a conflict can come in many forms, but I feel like a lack of communication or understanding is quite a, a big one. Um, same as when, you know, when you have differences in, in values or beliefs um, that, that also is a recipe for conflict. Um, I notice on board a lot of the time um, conflict is avoided and I, I don't think that's also a great way of handling it. I know that that's something that I've done previously and now that I'm more aware of it and, and it does work in certain situations, but avoidance is also not the best way of handling mm-hmm. conflict situations. Um, yeah, I, I think communication is key. Yeah. yeah, communication, as you said, values, understanding people's values. Mm. 
and that is such a big topic value so to unpack it um, here would not <laughs> probably be ideal <laughs> but yeah. I, I think a she's probably not a she's maybe a second stew but she told me her chief stew said if there's conflict I don't want to know about it the team needs to work it out themselves and being mm. in a leadership role, as you would understand, being a transformational leader, which we're striving to be, where we can mentor and we can guide, we can support, that is not reflective. That behavior is not reflective of that. But I can understand why maybe a head of department would say that. It could be, as you said, avoidance, but also not having the skill set or knowledge in terms of how to actually manage it specifically. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I think what makes it challenging for leaders in our industry is time because Mm. understanding, supporting, guiding crew members takes time and we are so stretched as it is. So how do you think you see you will see yourself making the time to be a transformational leader? Um. Setting aside the time and and prioritizing, I guess, um, you you know, when there's a situation at hand that needs to be, that needs some attention, um, or you have a a stewardess or or a team member that needs support, then then that is a priority in my eyes. You don't want someone feeling that way and unsupported in an environment. Um, So, yeah, it's it's a tricky one because we work in such a diverse industry and when things are full on it you know we can all relate to that <laughs> um but I guess just it doesn't take that long to give someone a five minute conversation and just show some empathy and and that goes a long way um mm-hmm. just knowing that they aren't alone in in a situation yeah Yeah, and I think what you're saying as well is making them feel heard and acknowledged. So that can take a couple of minutes and say, look, I can see you're feeling really frustrated right now. We're in the middle of service. How about in the evening, let's allocate some time to have a 10 minute chat rather than just dismissing it and going, oh, they're in a bad mood. I can't deal with it. Mm, Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So in the first module, I believe from memory, we also looked at your to be, to do, and to have goals. It feels like it was ages away. So I'm not too sure if you can remember, but do you have some insight into what those goals are specifically for yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, I can't remember them word for word, but I know um, the general consensus was I wanted to focus on um, communicating and articulating myself better. Um, And I think my second goal was about um, confidence and and kind of backing myself, something that I feel that I'm doing but could improve on. And I think my to have goal was to to utilise the skills learned in this course and, and put them into practice. Um, and yeah, it's, it does feel like a long time ago that we, we did that module. Um, and even just like more than halfway through this course. And I feel like my, my goals have changed, not that I've achieved them or anything. Um, just through all the learnings, um, I really feel that my perception on, on, these goals have definitely shifted. Um, what way? Through, um, I think through the research inquiry we did, um, and you know, asking for feedback, and, and I put these questions into my research inquiry. You know, not worded that way; they were a little bit more subtle. But um, yeah, the feedback I got from my team was really, really positive, and. I think that kind of shifted my mindset to perhaps there's a little bit more self-doubt than um, than anything in this area. So, um, yeah, I, I think my goals have slightly changed to not not be so critical on myself and not doubt myself. You know, oh, that's so yeah, interesting. really interesting. Yeah, mm. and your partner has he noticed any particular differences within you? Um, 
He, I think so. We haven't totally talked about it. He, he's just, I, th- I think he can. Um, he says that he can see some growth and he's so proud of me for doing this, you know, I'll say professional development, but it is definitely personal development too. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think he can notice it, but we haven't fully taken it down yet. <laughs> we will. Because you're a about to go in a shipyard period right yeah we have a um we're in a shipyard period now the boat's um about to be launched and we'll be taking on a ship soon so it's um it's a new build so setting up the boat's been fun (laughs) most of it was done remotely so now that i'm on the ground yeah we're, we're both here setting her up okay okay because i'm sure there's gonna be plenty more opportunities to actually apply your skill set, it's difficult when it's done virtually or correspondence when you're talking to so many individuals at different geographic locations. But when you're all yeah. together, like running workshops, as we have been learning in the course and being more hands on will be very interesting. I know that you've had some great insights around delegation and that mm. can be practiced now with regards to projects, running projects, and then um, getting assigning people to attend to the tasks within the projects and reporting back. A lot of us, mm. and I think the listeners would find this too, we can be yes people and we wanna please others and we overextend ourselves, creating more stress and leaving us feeling even more burnt out. So Mm. I think the beauty of the course is also unpacking, understanding why do we do what we do? Because I don't think Mm. we spend a lot of time thinking about it. Yeah, no, exactly. Mm. And I know that that not relinquishing responsibility, but um, when you do delegate, that's something that I've worked on. I I always want to support my team as much as I can and and help them as much as I can. that still keeps me really involved in that project. So learning to, you know, set the boundaries from the beginning and, and, you know, clear instructions um, and then, and then stepping away to lighten my own load is, is something that I've really I've learned from this course too, which is, which is great. And just breaking it down and having those clear instructions and guidelines is, <clears throat> yeah, just such incredible tools to develop. Excellent. So Mm. with regards to this course, it is an advanced leadership course and looking at what constitutes a team on a vessel, you've got various departments and some of those departments like the galley or the engineering room may not have a big team. So who would you think would be suitable to do the course. I'm not saying if you don't have a team, you're not suitable, but I'm just curious to know your insights. Yeah, um, I I don't want to sound cliche again, but yeah, I think I think it's quite beneficial to, to every department um, because it's not only, I don't feel like it's just helping me and my immediate team, you know, the interior. I feel like it's helping me develop skills to work with other senior crew members and other departments and even my my manager as well. So, um, yeah, I, d- I don't think you need to have a ma- like a big team beneath you to, to really benefit from this course. Um, I've, I've already sent it out to a few colleagues and I know that they're they're really keen to get get in on the next course, too. It's really exciting. And I think on a vessel, like you might have your silo department, but at the end of the day, you are all working together as a team. Like you cannot run a vessel without the engineering room. You cannot run a vessel without having a galley. Like it's impossible. And so really we do operate as a whole rather than in isolation. So I think learning how to manage conflict and communication, empathy, expanding your emotional intelligence is not only going to make you a better team member, but a better person as well. And if you know how to do it, it's going to reduce your stress. So it's just a win-win all over. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Nailed it. (laughs) Thanks, you. So any last words or any 
takeaways. I know we do takeaway after each session. It's become a little ritual. But um, yeah, for the listeners, is there anything that you would like to share? I'm just thinking about what questions you would have had before deciding to do an advanced leadership course. I know you said you wanted to upskill, but mm. there might be people sitting on the fence going, oh, I don't, I'm already a head of department. Like, do I need to do a leadership course? Another big objection is the amount of time it takes to do mm. the course. And it's three months. And um, I think I've shared this with you before. I have some crew members that go, oh no, don't you have something shorter? So what's your, what's your outlook on that? I think that would be a yeah a good closing point. Yeah, I mean it's so interesting you say that because doing the course now I'm like oh man it's going to be over soon, <laughs> um, and you feel like I couldn't imagine this course any more condensed. I feel like we that every single module would be more beneficial to spend more time on it. It really is touching the surface. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how you'd condense it and, and really get the same, not results, but, but benefit from it the same way. Um, I, I was a bit nervous about the time, to be honest, in the beginning, but I'm so glad I've done it. And, and you know, you just push through three months and get up a little earlier or you, you know, turn down a night out or you know it, it really doesn't take that much and once you get started it's not it's not a course that you're like oh man I have to sit down and put the hours in like you you really do enjoy and benefit from it so much like I find like I have to force myself to close the laptop sometimes so <laughs> it's, <laughs> it really is, it's, it's a course that I'm really really enjoying and I love that like I'm I'm not someone who yeah, if I don't enjoy it, I'm I'm, I'm going to struggle to do it. So um, I've really enjoyed this course. So it's been quite easy in that regards. But a lot of a lot of reflection, a lot of self development and growth, and you dive really deep, and and that's something that you you realise in your first module. Um, and I think once you once you get through the first module, you feel like you, you've found your feet a little bit, and you know you know what you're kind of in for, and and what kind of growth you're gonna you're going to get from this so it yeah interesting like just reflecting back of where you started and where you are now you did gain significant momentum once you started going mm. I know that the first module was not only difficult for you but for so many others but it was just you know using a different part of the brain and finding yes yeah yeah finding your space within the group and how to process that content because it it can just, you know, blow you out the water and you go, oh my gosh. Like, as you said, I didn't think I was going to think this deep. And I think one of the, the captains also shared in our group about how it really gets you thinking as well. So that's fantastic. Well done for embracing it. And I know that your workload is so intense. So I'm so impressed on how you've been able to manage your time to get through this course. Well done to you. Thank you. I mean, it's 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 a really great course. So it's 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 been super enjoyable. Very like vulnerable in the beginning, um, but oh, I hands down recommend it. It's been it's been amazing. Great. So well, thank you so much, Tash, for your time and sharing your insights. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kareen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Kareen from The Crew Coach here. If you are interested in the accredited Guest I Army Advanced Leadership course, do get in touch as the places fill up very quickly. You can contact me at kareen at thecrewcoach.com. That's K-A-R-I-N-E. Or you can find me on social media, Facebook and Instagram. Send me a DM and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care. Bye.